Behind this door is a secret hidden from every major world leader, business tycoon, banker, and media executive in the world. This room contains information so secretive, it's known to a handful of people on the planet. Inside is my grandma's chicken pie recipe. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> and because none of you know how it's made, it must be made by aliens. While it's clear to see that this line of reasoning is absurd, it's all too often used when talking about the pyramids, as though one or two unknown details about their construction must necessitate paranormal or extraterrestrial powers to explain their creation. That's not to say that the pyramids aren't impressive. The tallest pyramid is over 1,000 feet tall and was built by a massive labor force who believed their leader to be a god and is located in North Korea. <laughs> where it has stood incomplete for decades. This hotel of doom holds the Guinness World Record for the tallest unoccupied building in the world and still wasn't built by aliens. The pyramids of Giza by comparison are significantly shorter, but still extremely impressive. While they're only slightly larger than the Bass Pro Shop in Memphis, Tennessee, the pyramids of Giza are the oldest of the seven wonders of the world. The Great Pyramid was completed around the year 2560 BCE and was the tallest building in the world for nearly 4,000 years. It's made from 2.3 million blocks of stone, some weighing as much as 70 metric tons apiece. And the blocks were somehow carried across the desert by a civilization that had yet to invent the wheel. So they must have been built by aliens, right? And the most common claims of this nature don't come from actual architects, historians, or archaeologists, but from New Age nonsense. Books like Chariots of the Gods and conspiracy theorists like David Icke who claim that the pyramids were built by reptilian aliens, many of whom are now living among us as devious world leaders. Now, David Icke made this claim after having a spiritual revelation, after standing in a stone circle and feeling the kundalini align his chakras, telling him that he was the son of a god. And as much as I appreciate the analogy of all politicians being inbred blood-sucking reptiles, Ike actually means this literally. See, here's the catch. People like David Icke make out like we don't have the slightest clue about how the pyramids were made. And that's flat out not true. We may have a few missing puzzle pieces with competing theories to explain them, but we actually know quite a lot. Here's what we do know. If you want to build an impressive structure, there's two ways you can build. Up or out. If you're building up, the easiest, most stable design is in fact a pyramid. Wide base, narrow top. The Egyptian empire was the greatest civilization in the world at the time, was extremely religious and was fascinated with life after death. The pharaoh was considered a god and the pyramids were the sacred resting places for these divine rulers. Some Christians and Jews claim that the Israelites built the pyramids, citing claims in the Old Testament of Jewish slavery in Egypt. Whether or not the Jews were ever slaves in Israel or the Exodus story ever happened is entirely irrelevant to this question, because even if the biblical timeline is 100% accurate, according to it, the Jews relocated to Israel after Joseph was exiled there. And what we know from detailed Egyptian records, genealogies, and modern dating techniques, that's a thousand years after the pyramids were built. Genesis also mentions chariots riding in of Joseph, which could have been a thing in 1500 BCE, but at the time the pyramids were built a millennium earlier, the Egyptians hadn't even discovered the wheel yet. Not that the Bible has ever been historically accurate. The pyramids at Giza date back to over 200 years before the Bible claims that Noah was hopping on an ark. And yet the Egyptians continued working on their monuments right up through the flood, recording every step of the way. And the mummies preserved from that time and earlier show no signs whatsoever of flood damage. No, the pyramids weren't built by Jewish slaves. And and it wasn't aliens. They were built by over 20,000 highly skilled specialized craftsmen. We know this from paintings, hieroglyphics, as well as excavated burial sites and remnants of the nearby construction town. Archaeologists have discovered the village that housed the workers who built these monuments 4,500 years ago. Some of the workers, it appears, were conscripted, similar to a military draft. And while there was a hierarchy for the workers, working on the pyramid at all was considered a respected occupation of national importance. The skeletons of the workers have been analyzed and show signs of hard labor, but they also received state-of-the-art medical care. They were fed a diet of meat, bread, and beer, not a typical slave diet. The excavations have even shown that the workers were not slaves, as it was once believed. They were proud to serve their pharaoh and accompany him on his journey to the afterlife. And they were given honorary burials in the shadow of the pyramid. Dr. Hawass was surprised at the elaborate nature of these tombs. They do not look like humble burial grounds for slaves. If the people who built the pyramids were slaves, they will never be buried in the shadow of the pyramid. If they were slaves, they will never prepare their tombs for eternity like kings and queens. So we know who built them, the Egyptians, but 
how were they built? Well, the pyramids were built right next to the limestone quarries their rocks were pulled from. We know this because the quarries are still there. The Egyptians used copper tools to chip away at the rocks. We've analyzed their tools and found that an impurity in the copper actually made the tools stronger than you would find with pure copper. The rocks from these quarries were then hauled to the pyramids on wooden sleds, with workers in front wetting the sand with water from the Nile to make the sand slick for the sleds. The support stone above the internal king's chamber where the pharaoh was buried were a much stronger granite stone. This was quarried further down the Nile and was transported upriver on boats. It was cut by pouring sand on the rock and sliding a copper saw back and forth across it. It's sand, but it's the quartz crystals within the sand which embed themselves into the softer copper. And because the saw is dragging those crystals backward and forth within the slot, that actually does the cutting. It took a lot longer to cut, but remember, it was just the support stones, not the entire pyramid. That's what we know. Now we get a little closer to the realm of speculation with professional calculations and educated guesses. While some people have proposed elaborate flotation devices and water systems that floated the rocks to the top of the pyramids, this is extremely unlikely, would require hydraulic pumps, massive waterproof systems, huge locking mechanisms, and almost a more complicated system than the entire pyramid itself. Others claim the blocks were poured like concrete, but why would they quarry limestone rocks that are exactly the size of the ones used in the pyramid and drag them all the way to the pyramid if they're pouring blocks of natural concrete that are indistinguishable from limestone? Others have speculated one long ramp on the outside, but this would either be too steep or so long that it would need as much material to build as the pyramid itself. Possible, but maybe not the best solution. French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin proposed a small seven degree ramp leading part of the way up the pyramid and then internal ramps wrapping around the inside. His ramp would enable limestone blocks to be hauled to the very top, 146 meters up. He believed the ramp would never have more than a 7% incline because otherwise it would be too steep for dragging up the stones. Notches at each right angle would allow the stones to be turned and also provide ventilation for the tunnels. This theory held much promise and early basic scans of the pyramid seem to indicate that he may be onto something, but more recent muon scans of the pyramid seem to refute at least the internal ramp part of this hypothesis. Computer scientists have come up with models for various types of external ramps, and a better understanding of the inside makeup of the pyramid may lead to promising future understandings. Lastly, there's the possibility that the Egyptians use ropes and levers similar to the techniques shown in this video. While it may seem absurd at first, bear in mind that leveraging a few simple techniques can allow one person alone to lift absolutely gigantic rocks, as demonstrated by this guy who single-handedly recreated his own Stonehenge. I've tried to do this without any mechanical machinery at all. I've used uh, mostly sticks and uh, stones for my equipment, uh, no pulleys, no hoist, no uh, metal levers. In order to move it up to this point, I just rock the block back and forth, adding weight to that end, and that opens a gap on this side, and uh, just slide a board in. The easiest way I can explain this is to, this is just a big teeter-totter, and I got the big kid on that end, and he's gonna go down, this end's going up. Okay, finally, she's between the lines, guys. As Archimedes once said, give me a lever and a place to stand, and I will move the world. He wasn't kidding. And don't forget that the Egyptians had an army of over 20,000 skilled craftsmen and specialized workers. This is just one guy. Personally, I don't know. Those are just a few possibilities, and I would love to hear what you think in the comments below. But now back to what we do know. The Egyptians didn't start by building the Great Pyramid. They began with smaller, more basic stepped pyramids, and as they mastered their techniques, they built bigger and better monuments. They didn't use slaves or dinosaurs, and unlike what we would expect if the pyramids were built by highly advanced aliens, the Egyptian process was trial and error. The earliest smooth pyramids were too steep. One of them collapsed from the weight distribution, and when the weight of another pyramid caused the ground below it to sink slightly and crack some of the stones, the workers realized that the weight would be too heavy for the support rocks. So they changed the plans, and from that point up, they decreased the angle slightly, lowering the total amount of weight bearing down on the king's chamber support stones. That's not a mistake a hyper-advanced alien species would make, because no matter how complicated you think a stack of rocks in the desert is, I guarantee you that an intergalactic spaceship is exponentially more high-tech. And besides, why would aliens traverse the galaxy just to stack up nature's Legos in a giant sand pit and stuff it with a human corpse? And if the pyramids were built by extraterrestrials as spacecraft, as some ancient alien crackpots speculate, why are they built using the heaviest material and the least aerodynamic shape possible? And if they're built to transfer energy somehow, why are they made of limestone and not something electromagnetic? 
Most people don't realize just how many written records we have from ancient Egypt, and they love to point to one or two pieces of art and extrapolate entire crackpot theories from that. One of these pieces of evidence ufologists put forth for the pyramid's extraterrestrial construction is this depiction of the pharaoh Akhenaten. What is up with his head? It's gotta be alien! Until you look at some of the dozens of other depictions of him and realize that it's just a hat. An exaggerated drawing of the Egyptian pharaoh's crown, which was already long. Don't believe me? This is Alexander the Great. Clearly he has a normal head. After he conquered Egypt, you can find carvings of Alexander wearing the long crown. It's a hat, guys. It's a hat. Not to mention, Akhenaten was born 1,200 years after the pyramids of Giza were built. Now, you may think that these kinds of errors and BS claims are harmless, and for the most part, I'd agree with you. Intel conspiracy theorists use claims like these to promote blatant anti-Semitism, claiming that aliens built the pyramids and their descendants are the Jews, who are greedy, power-thirsty, and secretly rule the world with evil intentions. This is genuinely harmful. And when Egypt wanted to celebrate its rich history in the year 2000 by putting a capstone on the Great Pyramid, conspiracy theorists claims that it was a Jewish Illuminati ritual stopped the celebration from happening, robbing a nation of a piece of its national pride and heritage. That sucks. According to Egyptologist Dr. Zahi Hawass, Old Kingdom decorations from the tomb of Sahur depict a golden capstone being dragged towards the pyramids, while in neighboring registers, groups of male and female dancers perform, presumably as part of the celebrations for completing the pyramid, indicating that topping the pyramid with a golden pyramidion was a time for the nation to celebrate the completion of their national project. The pyramids are Egyptian made. They've always been Egyptian. And no matter what any anti-Semite, Bible thumper, or UFO nut says to push their own hunches or agenda, they'll always be Egyptian. And as always, dare to be curious, but don't drink the Kool-Aid.